a massive security exploit was just discovered in Next.js that allows me to bypass the authentication of many modern applications with just one single button press. For example, in this application, I can access the login and the home page just fine, but if I try to go to the admin page, it redirects me to the login page because I'm not logged in currently. But if I just click one single button, I am now able to bypass that and go directly to the admin page even though I'm currently not logged in. Now in this video, I'm not only gonna talk about what this exploit is and what it means for Next.js, but I also wanna talk about how this exploit came about, how you can use the knowledge of this exploit inside of your code to make sure you write more secure code. And just overall, the point of this video is to try to help make it so that you don't make the same mistakes that the developers of Next.js made. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And to understand a little bit better how this application works, I wanna go through all of the important code. So as you can see here, we have our home page, we have our login page and our admin page, and they're all pretty much identical. They just have links that go to the other pages and then some text telling us what page that we're on. Now, all of the authentication for this is handled in two files. We have our auth file and then we have our middleware file. I'm gonna start with the middleware file because it's relatively straightforward. You can see here, if our request starts with slash admin, so anything that goes to the slash admin route or beyond, we're going to go into this if block right here. We're gonna be getting our current user that comes from this auth file. All it does is it checks our cookies for a username and it finds the user with that specific username. Now you can imagine replacing this with any authentication system you want, whether it's third party or something you wrote yourself, just some way to get a session for a user to determine if they're logged in or not. Really, we're just trying to get the logged in user from our cookies. It doesn't matter what method you use. So now we have an actual user and here we're doing our security check. If the user is equal to null or they're not an admin, we're gonna redirect them to the login page. Otherwise, we're gonna let them proceed on just fine as if nothing was wrong with the application. And that's all that our code does right here. And you can see it's working just fine. If I go to my homepage or my login page, I can access those. But as soon as I go to admin, doesn't matter how many times I click on this admin page, it always redirects me back to my login page. And I can even check that my login functionality is working by just going into my page and manually setting that cookie. So we can go to the application, go to the cookies for our page. I'm gonna set a cookie for username and I'm gonna set a value of Kyle, since Kyle is an admin user, just like that. If we go back to our auth here, you can see Kyle has an admin set to true, so we know that they are an admin user. And now if I access the admin page, you can see I access this page just fine. Now the security exploit that I wanna talk about bypasses any type of code that you have inside of your middleware, which is a very common place that a lot of people put their authentication code. Many third-party providers that you use for authentication, for example, will have you put your authentication code directly inside the middleware. And if that's the only place you're dealing with authentication, then this security vulnerability is something that you are already having to worry about. So kind of step one of what you can do to learn from this is don't only rely on your middleware. If you think about it, your middleware runs on every single request, which is great for certain things like authentication and saving user information. But the problem is that it's one point of failure. If this code ever fails for any reason, whether you wrote bad code or the third-party library you using is bad, or maybe Next.js has this security vulnerability, that means that your entire application is vulnerable because of one single failure point. So generally that's not a good thing you wanna spread out. So if you have one single failure point, it doesn't bring down your entire application or lead to massive bugs like this. Now to understand exactly why this security vulnerability is happening, we can actually look at a really great article here. This is actually written by the person that discovered this security vulnerability. They discovered it about a month ago, sent it directly to Next.js so that they could work on it behind the scenes. And then only a few days ago was this bug actually released to the public for us to be able to figure out, okay, hey, this is a bug and we need to update to the newest version of Next.js. They updated it for a lot of their different packages because this bug has actually been in Next.js for multiple years. And all that this bug is, is a way to prevent recursive loops inside your middleware. So what this code does is it essentially is running your middleware for you. So what's happening is it's checking this parameters for this X middleware sub request. So you can imagine on a page, you access the admin page, for example, and from the admin page, you're making another fetch request to your application to get something like an image, or maybe you're trying to get like a local source of data. So you're doing a fetch request to your server. So this is essentially multiple requests that you're making. You can even imagine this is happening directly inside your middleware to get user information. For example, you get their information from the cookie, and then you access something on your server using a fetch request to get all their user information. So you're making multiple requests from your middleware back to your application. So to prevent you from having an infinitely recursive loop where you constantly call your middleware over and over and over again an infinite number of times, they've set up this max recursion depth of five. Essentially saying that if you are calling your middleware five times in a row, doing the exact same thing, just calling middleware over and over and over again, instead of looping forever and crashing your application, they say, okay, once you hit five recursive calls, we're immediately going to exit out. That's what this section circle here is. This is an early return that says, if we have more than five or five or more recursive calls, immediately exit out and say that it was successful and don't call the middleware again, because we've tried to call it five times in a row and obviously we don't need
need to do that. And if we look at the actual code inside of Next.js, this is the exact same function you can see here. We have that section that's the exit out early. And then we have this edge function right here. This edge function is essentially your middleware function. That's what it's accessing. And then way down here later in the code, it's actually calling this edge function. So by doing this early return, we completely skip calling the middleware function if we've already called it five times in a row. Now you may be able to see where we are able to create a security vulnerability because what happens if I can tell Next.js that I've already called my middleware five times, even if I've not called it at all? Well, what would happen is it would go directly inside this if statement, return early and never call your middleware at all. And that's exactly what the security vulnerability is doing. The way that it determines how many different requests that you've made is it splits a string based on colons and it's going to be looking at this X middleware sub request header, which is something Next.js sets for you. So every time that you make a request that's a sub request from your middleware, it's going to append that request on to figure out what it is actually requesting. And if it's constantly requesting your middleware over and over and over again, that's how it's going to get that max recursion depth of five. And if we scroll down just a little ways, we can see exactly how we can bypass this by passing along our own header. You can see here X middleware sub request. And depending on where your middleware file is, in my case, I have a source folder. So my middleware is inside the source folder. I would use this section op second option here, where all you do is you take the path to your middleware source slash middleware and a colon, and you just do that five times. So here we have it one time, then we have a second time, a third time, a fourth time, and a fifth time. And by doing that, by putting that header directly in our code, we're essentially, when we get to this point in our code, telling Next.js, I have made five recursive calls, exit out immediately without ever calling my middleware. And that's what's happening inside of our code when I click this single button. What I can do, if I just click play on this, you can see I'm adding this X middleware sub request with that exact same value of five middleware function files separated by colons into my request. So every single request that my application makes, it's going to be sending along this extra header. So now I'm able to essentially navigate through my page as if I was skipping the middleware by being logged in already. So I can come in here, go to my application tab, completely remove this or even change it to a user that specifically does not have admin permissions. And you can see I can still access the admin page just fine as if I was logged in, even though I'm logged into a user that does not have admin permissions. So kind of the takeaway that I want you to get from this particular section is that when you're writing code that has like a shortcut, a way of getting out of a particular situation, you need to make sure you really analyze it to see how can this be exploited. Essentially, they are trusting the code from the client to tell them how many times they have called the middleware. But as we know from web development, you can never trust client side code. You must always verify and validate things on the server side. So the fact that they are just trusting this header to come from the client and be you know, truthful in how many times you've done the request is the problem because if someone wants to lie and say they've already done five requests like we did, you can see we can easily bypass this little bit of code. So if you're getting information from the client, assume that it's going to be malicious and going to be bad and that you have to either validate it in some way or just not use it because you know it's going to be bad data. Another thing is if you're going to be putting in these kind of backdoor things, you have to be extra careful to make sure you just look at it really closely to figure out are there any security loopholes. If someone spent the extra time to really look at this function and think about what's going on here, they may realize the actual security implications of opening up a backdoor that skips your middleware is much worse than having a situation where you infinitely loop in your middleware. Because honestly, if you're doing five recursive calls in your middleware, you probably have badly written code that you need to fix. So instead of just putting essentially that problem and scooping it under the rug, they should just throw the error for you and say, hey, you've done too many recursive calls. So instead of doing a backdoor that skips everything, have it throw an error message that says you've had too many recursive calls, rewrite your code to maybe not have all these recursive calls. So what is an easy way that we can actually write our code to make sure we are more resilient with these different things? I talked about how we can make sure we don't really worry about backdoors, but how do we make it so that we don't use our middleware as the only source of truth for our actual application? It's fine to use your middleware for some authentication stuff, and maybe you can store your user information inside of different things inside your middleware. That's perfectly okay. But anything that's security or mission critical, you probably shouldn't put inside this middleware because like I said, it's one single point of failure. Instead, anywhere you have a page that should be accessed only by certain users, do your check directly inside the page. Not only will it make your code cleaner because now when you look at the admin page, you know exactly the requirements that it has, but also it'll make it more secure. So a quick example of what that looks like is I can get my user by calling that get user function, which takes in cookies. I'm gonna pass along my cookies like that, make this an asynchronous function. Now I have my user and I can essentially take this exact check that I have in here and I can place it into this function instead. So here I can just do a simple redirect and I can redirect them to that login page. Just like that, make sure I import redirect, there we go. And now I've essentially very clearly outlined this page is only accessible by admin users. It's very clear inside my code and I now have access to this user object, which is another really great thing inside the code. So here we go, let me give that a quick save and you'll notice that it actually fixes all my problems over here. 
I have that backdoor enabled right now in my application, but if I try to go to the admin page, it just redirects me back to the login page, even though I have that backdoor enabled. And that's because even though I'm skipping this security check in my middleware, I'm doing that security check on each one of my individual routes that needs to have that level of security. So this is a great way for me to make sure, okay, there's no one point of failure. If my admin page fails, it's because of this particular section of code right here. It's not because this one middleware file fails, which means let's say that I have a bug in my code in one of my admin pages, only that one page would have that security vulnerability versus every single one of my admin pages if I was having it inside of a middleware like this. Also, I find writing my code like this much easier to reason with because when I first get my user, this is an object that could be null. You can see it can be undefined right here. So by putting my check directly in my code right here, I also make sure that I have a user object that is typed properly in TypeScript where all of my different properties are aligned. I know for a fact that this is a non-null user that has a string and an admin Boolean. If you watch a lot of my project-based videos, you'll know that almost every single file that I have has code that looks pretty much like this, where I check if the user is equal to null and then redirect them to the login if they're not. This little line of code right here is in a lot of my projects when I deal with authentication. Even though I do my authentication stuff in the middleware, I put it additionally inside of these different files. And honestly, you can even remove your authentication directly from the middleware and instead use it as more of a gluing piece to help you with like getting the user information and storing that wherever you want it and so on. That's the stuff you can do inside the middleware while actual authentication and security and authorization, that should happen directly in the actual files or the server actions where your code is happening. And if your application was already doing this, even though there is this massive security bug in Next.js, it doesn't actually affect you because you are using your authentication properly in different places. And even if they bypass the middleware, it doesn't actually affect you. Now, if you're really security focused, you may be wondering how to implement authorization or authentication in your Next.js application. And I have two massive master classes on both those topics. I'm gonna link them right over here that cover everything you need to know about authorization and authentication. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.